Hello everyone and welcome to the next episode of the LMS Cast podcast. I am Joshua Millage and I'm joined today with Christopher Badgett, like I am every day. And uh, today we're going to be talking about how to build a WordPress LMS business. We're going to talk about some income and how to get this whole thing cranking. So Chris, what are the different ways that someone could make money with a WordPress LMS site? Well, I think the place to start is to really start thinking about value and what makes WordPress LMS and e-learning so powerful is it gives you a tool to create a lot of value in the life of, of somebody else. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's what makes it so powerful. So if we focus on the user experience of the student or the trainee or whatever you want to call the person who's consuming the LMS content, the question becomes how valuable is what you're offering to that person and what's the perceived value, what's the actual value, what can they do with that training, what are what kind of new opportunities are they going to have. So it's really important to start there. And once you get clear on that, on get, getting really zen with the goals of your teaching, your learning materials, then we can start building a business model around that. And there's so many different ways to do it. And like we've mentioned in previous episodes, the role of the teacher or what you traditionally think of as schooling or training or education or what a teacher is, is changing rapidly and it's up for debate. Mm -hmm. So we're talking to entrepreneurs, we're talking to traditional teachers, non-traditional teachers, subject matter experts in professional things and hobby things and whatever you can think about and also online marketers. So all those different people can, you know, find their own value in their ideal customer. Right. So that's that's the place to start. And as far as generating a business model to go on top of that, you once you figure out what pain you're going to solve or what desired outcome you're going to help your student achieve, you can really structure something. So to give you some examples, uh, one option would be I'm a web programmer and I want to learn a skill so that I can get a job or if I'm already in business for myself, uh, get better clients or do better job for my clients or charge more money. Yeah. If that's the case, I would be willing to pay you know, $100 for a new uh, a course on a new programming language like HTML5 or 6 or, or PHP or Python and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. If I was, <clears throat> you were going to take me from not knowing anything about web programming to a complete master, and maybe that would include a bundle of courses or, you know, kind of like the 101, 201 model that we see in universities. Mm-hmm. I might subscribe to a monthly recurring revenue uh, model in the sense that I get ongoing training and I take different courses along this journey to becoming a professional web programmer. I would pay a lot more for that, whether that's $30 a month, $99 a month, or $1,000 for lifetime access, that kind of thing. So, you know, the business model can be very different. The other thing you can do is if you're you can also license your educational content to other organizations. If, uh, let's say, a company wants to require its employees to have a you know yearly refresher of CPR and first aid, uh, and you produce this like awesome course about an online version of refresher on CPR and first aid, and you license that to different companies that you could white label it, they could put their logo on it or whatever, um, that would just be another example. So it that's really awesome. disguises the limit. Yeah, that's really, really cool. And so the, the I think the key thing I heard is start with the outcome of like what you want to do um, and then build backwards from there. Is that kind of the key takeaway you think in, in, in that is, is really have a, a solid focus of what you want to achieve? Yeah, and it's at the end of the day, it's all about as long as – Anybody involved in a learning management system project always keeps the end user in mind and the success of that user. You can't go wrong and everybody wins. I love that. So, Chris, you know, like I mentioned in our first episode, my parents were both teachers. 
And mm-hmm. I, they didn't make a whole lot of money being teachers. So yeah. what is actually like, it, it, we're talking about this, like there's actually a big opportunity out there. Like, is there like, how much money can we make from these WordPress LMS businesses? Well, I mean, what I recommend people do if you're a solopreneur and you're just starting out is just start small. Create a course. Don't even think about the money. Just do it so that you can get behind it and uh, just learn yourself about how to create learning if you're kind of new to teaching and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. On the far other end of the spectrum is somebody who creates an e-learning platform with multiple instructors. If we talk about Udemy.com, which is not on the WordPress platform, but it's a it's a place, it's an aggregator where publish it creates a marketplace where publishers and learners come together. So there's hundreds or maybe even thousands of courses on there. Wow. You take fifty percent of the income of most of the courses. There's some cases where the course author earns more and, and whatnot, but in any case, you could build an entire e-learning platform like that with our Lifter LMS plugin. Wow. Or you could be the more of the solopreneur, I just care about me and my thing and it's just my platform. But yeah. So you can you can be a publisher of other publishers or you can be a publisher yourself. Obviously, the higher up the chain you go, the more you can make and in the solopreneur model, uh, the more valuable your content, the stronger your marketing the greatness of your reach globally is going to influence how much money you can make. But really, that is the beauty of the internet. You and I work through the internet and we kind of get this concept of how powerful and the scale of how, how many people you can reach mm-hmm. through the internet. Right. And that's, that's the difference between making a little bit of money and making a lot of money. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's a great point. I know that... Mint, or, um, Udemy has actually minted multiple millionaires. Yes. And, and they've taken, you know, they've taken, they take 50% of all sales. That's what they're doing right now. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a lot of sales. And that that's, I think, you know, I will say this, if you want to, um, if you want to not have to worry about exposure so much, I think Udemy is a great option. But I would encourage people to, to, to shy away from that and build their own WordPress LMS based site to for control and monetary control, um, but it will probably be a longer process uh, because you have to create your group and your following. The only other thing though is you also can be the only person. You know, on on a Udemy, you're you you can get lost in the crowd, and there's still marketing that needs to be done. And there's but, a there's an alternative strategy that I use as well where. I publish on my own platform, for example, with my wife and I's organic gardening courses website. Yeah. I, I publish those courses there on the Word, my WordPress LMS. The but premium also, ones, right? But I also take it to you, Demi, to expand my exposure, expand my uh, reach. okay. At the end of the day, I would rather have people on my platform only, but it's a, it's great to leverage other platforms so let's, too. So this is kind of a little pro tip thing, Chris. I like you're, you're dropping this little bomb, but I mean... Basically, you're using Udemy as a lead gen source for, and you're bringing people back to your organic life, uh, organic gardening site, or something else that you're doing, to then charge them, and then you get them into your system, and you can create the relationship. Is that what I'm hearing here? I actually do like two versions of that. One version is I'll put stuff on Udemy for free, and that's more just lead, just straight up lead generation. The okay. other thing I do is I put stuff on Luke. You did me for the same cost as I sell it on my platform. That's also lead generation, but it's also another revenue stream. Got it. I love that. I love that. And you could probably do that with other places like SlideShare even if you wanted to give some slide decks away and then bring leads back. So maybe we should do a little other episode about lead gen and, and how to bring people to your courses. But there's a couple, those are some valuable nuggets right there, man. You're not even yep. charging for them either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's great, man. That's really but cool. I do want to highlight, like you mentioned, there are millionaire solopreneur yeah. WordPress e-learning people, and there's also people just getting started. So it can be a very small side income, or it can get quite large. And well, it's, it's a just... $50 billion business. I mean, yes. the market is huge. That's, that's the it's similar market size to... Um, well, gosh, I mean, a lot of a lot of pieces of technology are are 
in that range. I don't. I just think it's a silent billion dollar industry that a lot of us don't know. And uh, it's now is a better time than ever to start participating in that. Because I think this all plays into this. I'm going to get real macro for a second here. But if you think about the democratization of business, you think about people are able to start companies online easier than they ever have. And there's also a, a shift in the fact that no one really cares. Well, not no one, but there fewer and fewer people care about your credentials and more about what you can actually do for them, you know, especially right. in the younger generations. It's all about trust. It's all about, is this person hip, cool? Do I understand them? Do I connect with them? Is their information affecting me in a positive way? I don't care if they have an MBA. I don't care if they have a degree, but did this stuff work? And the internet's allowing that transparency to happen. And then when it comes to education, it's like, is your information good? And I love it because it actually goes back to, I think, what the world was a little bit like, you know, 100 to 200 years ago, where the guy down the street, he didn't care if you were an agricultural PhD. He wanted to know, could you help me plant my corn better? And if you could, yeah. then you got respect and trust was built, and maybe he comes back to you and hires you for a day to come consult on his. Yeah, I don't know how it works exactly, but you get the idea. Is like trust was built, and then because, because an outcome happened, um, you know, I think that what's interesting is people have been able to hide behind, you know, the traditional sense of education and, and even in business, you know, we need an MBA. I've heard that so many times. We need an MBA for this job. Do you actually need an MBA or do you know, need to know someone, you know, get someone who knows what they're doing? And I think now actually that's shifted. We don't need more MBAs and, uh, and I'm okay. I, I'm an MBA, so I can offend MBAs out there. We're not that cool, you know, <laughs> but I think that this, this is like, an awesome opportunity. Take what's ever in your head, download it into a structured format online and get to selling and get to putting it out there and or give it away for free. I mean, if it's not about selling, you know, at least you have a structured way of sharing your information instead of just a bunch of web pages or something. You can actually assess and engage with the people that are learning. And a lot of other things can happen out of that. So, you know, I, I want to shift gears and talk a little bit about our WordPress LMS plugin that people can learn about at lifterlms.com. You can sign up to be notified about that. Um, but, you know, we are going, one of the things that we're doing, one of the many things we're doing is simplifying the e-commerce side of things. So tell me, you know, uh, what are we doing, Chris, that's different than other options that are out there? Great question. Well, in a previous episode, we talked about why we chose WordPress and the power of the WordPress community and the extendability of the platform. One of those extendable elements is the ability to integrate different types of payment processing or e-commerce plugins into your site. And the way that we are what I would call transcending and including what has come before us is it's been a little hacky. I take this WordPress plugin, I combine it with my LMS plugin, and I use about 80 or, or, or I only end up using about 5 to 10 percent of the e-commerce plugin, but I get it just to work to do what I want. And then when I want recurring subscription revenue instead of one-off sales, now I got to go find another custom solution. So what we're doing is we're very aware of those problems because we work in that space and as web developers and LMS experts, so we know that pain point very well. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying, hey, we have this great plugin, you're going to need to download this, 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 and this to make it work and be able to sell stuff and protect it, we just went ahead and built all that right in and learned from what has happened in the past and really taking that evolution to the next level of ease of use because at the end of the day our use, it's all about creating a simple platform for not only the student that's very useful valuable but also for the the teacher the website administrator so with our e-commerce element it's going to have its own shopping cart you don't need you don't have to install anything else it's going to work with paypal out of the box you can do one-off sales you can do subscriptions and it in kind of concert with the membership component of the L Lifter LMS, which doesn't require a third-party membership plugin, you can restrict content and get creative in how you do bundles. Like, okay, I want to sell course A for this much, course B for this much, but if you buy them together, you can get them at this price, or you can buy them, you know, at this price for recurring revenue. If you want to have like a subscription 
model going. So all those common questions and concerns of how do I sell this thing now that I've done all this hard work of creating that, we've worked really hard to address. And as we launch into the marketplace of the e-learning community, we're totally open to feedback and, and um, seeing if there's anything else that people feel uh, is needed. We're also one of the other kind of hidden pieces of our plugin, and I say hidden because it's not necessarily the easiest to comprehend if you don't have a strong marketing mind or just haven't been involved in thinking about software user experience and engagement and those kinds of things. It's called the engagement component. And with that, what we're essentially doing is we're taking a lot of the best features that we've learned as Infusionsoft power users in human, uh, more automated human interactions and different scenarios, triggering emails and notifications and things like that. We're bringing that right into the plugin. Right. And on that note, we're also making it easy so if you already are an Infusionsoft user, you can sync it up with the Infusionsoft card. We're going to be having Stripe coming in too for credit card processing, and any, all, the, all the main players are going to be there. But you could install the plugin this weekend, add your LMS content, and start selling via PayPal right away. Well, and you know? the other thing too is the reason that it's a premium plugin is we don't want to just sell this and never improve it. It's we, we're taking a very iterative mindset in the sense of we've got this incredible suite of base uh, I say base, meaning just what we're launching with functionality. It gives you some incredible benefits. Um, by, by no means is it basic. It's just what we're launching with is incredibly awesome. But that's the, the cool thing is we're not just trying to sit there. A lot of plugins are released and they're never improved upon. We have a very, very, very tight roadmap. Um, and I imagine we'll probably be updating this plugin, what would you say, at least once or twice a month with new functionality, new integrations. Uh, I think we're, in terms of connecting with autoresponders, I can see us going into the, the uh, AWeber, MailChimp scene for that. Like you said, um, Codebox, the company that Chris is a partner in, I'm a, a co-founder and owner in also, um, is the, the group that's developing the plugin. And we have an incredible background in the Infusionsoft community. So that's why we're launching first with that, that integration is because we know it so well. But we're taking what we've learned there, and we're going to distribute that to everyone else. So um, anybody who's an, on Entreport, Mailchimp, Aweber, we're going to come in, We're going to come to you guys shortly. Um, but again, you don't have to have that for it to work. It's completely self-contained. Even with sending out emails and things for engagement, it's completely self-contained. It doesn't need this, these integrations. And then, like Chris said, we're going to be launching with the Infusionsoft e-commerce connection as well as uh, PayPal. Correct, Chris? That's correct. And then Stripe is right around the corner. Um, and we'd love to hear from you about other integrations you would like to see in the way of e-commerce so that we can prioritize what's next um, and what will benefit the most people out there. So uh, if you could, uh, you can reach out to us and let us know some of the things you'd like to see, and we would be happy to answer any questions. Uh, you can reach Chris at chris at lmscast.com. You can reach me at joshua at lmscast.com lmscast.com and uh, we would love to hear from you. So Chris, any closing thoughts for the people who are listening? Yeah, I just want to dial it back in, in terms of e-commerce and just, e-commerce is one of those rabbit holes that you can go down and you can really get hung up in and we're, we're aware of how that works and we want to this Lifter LMS plugin is designed so that if you just need something really simple, like you have your website's going to have one course, you want to sell it one time fee of ninety seven dollars, you can do that. Uh, but this, just like everything else, like multi teachers or this advanced engagement we're talking about, or these custom membership restrictions and levels within the site, yeah, you can scale it up and make it as complex as you need and. And you can extend it through these other except credit cards on your site with Stripe or and, and those kinds of things. So we're there for you. And you know, leave a comment on this on this podcast on lmscast.com and feel free to reach out with us by email. E-commerce is one of those things that we just really we pay really close attention to because we know it's so important to you as the entrepreneur, the expert, the teacher the online marketer that if this if you do all this work and it's not making 
money for you or you get bogged down into the e-commerce part, that's really frustrating and we don't want to, that's not going to happen with, with our solution and, and we, we're here for you and however to support you building a real business around your knowledge and life experience. Right on. I love it, Chris. Well, until next time, we will see everyone soon.